Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today we're gonna to look at the iX Systems FreeNAS Mini XL Plus, which is the company's new 8-bay NAS. It has things like a new updated processor, 10 gig ethernet, and various cache options, which make it a lot different than the previous generation. So just starting with the box real quick, the box is really nice and it's really designed for IT organizations to take the box in-house, set it up, configure it, and then send it back out to remote locations. There are things like plastic handles and high density foam all throughout the package. So as we open it up, you're gonna see the first thing that is a nice FreeNAS mini accessories pack. Inside this box, you're gonna see a ethernet cable, you'll see a power cable, you'll see the locks to the door, then you see a nice welcome letter. We wish that there were two ethernet cables. It's kind of a bummer that it only came with one. Really, you should have two or three ethernet cables with this machine to be able to handle both 10 gig ethernet ports plus the IPMI management port, but that's just kind of one of those tiny things that we wish that the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus came with. The other thing that you get is we actually are testing the 32 terabyte model from Amazon. And as you open up the packaging, what you're gonna see is that all the drives are nicely placed in this kind of high density foam packaging, which helps ensure that they make it through shipping without getting damaged. The other nice thing is that the iX Systems guys actually put them into their trays. So you don't have to go and put four screws in to screw a hard drive into a tray times eight hard drives. And that just takes a couple minutes that you know, you don't really want. The other really nice thing about the trays are that they come and they're actually a locking tray mechanism. The trays come numbered zero through seven. So that way you have some kind of organization and numbering without having to do it yourself. Once you go underneath the tray of hard drives, what you're gonna see is the actual unit, which again is packed in very high density foam. There's a ton of spacing underneath and there's even a cardboard separator between the actual main unit and the drive. So this is something that's really robust, really easy packaging to repack and send out again. See, now that we have the unit out, it's a pretty nice chassis. This is actually a chassis that's built by a company called Ablecom. That This is the same chassis that the FreeNAS Mini XL used in the previous generation. And you have eight front bays that are good for three and a half inch hard drives. You could also, in theory, put two and a half inch SATA drives if you really wanted to in there. Our unit also has a top hot swap bay for a cache SSD. Now, if you move on to the back, what you'll see is you have two 10 gig ethernet ports. You have a VGA port. You have your expansion slot. You also have the IPMI management port along with two USB ports on the back. There's a kind of standard power supply connector. And what you also notice is that the iX Systems team even did things like they customized the fans that are used for cooling, which helps keep the unit quiet. So we open the security seals and inside, you can see the heart of the system, which is a Supermicro A2 SDI motherboard with an Intel Atom C3758 chip. You'll see that we have things like a L2 ARC, which is a read cache drive already installed. There's actually another spot which is being unused right now. You'll see as we flip the system over that the iX Systems team did a really good job of doing cable management. There's also two 16 gig hard DIMMs. You can expand to 64 gigs by just simply adding two more 16 gig DIMMs. And the maximum of the motherboard is actually 256 gigs of RAM, which allows you to run a lot of applications at the edge if you need not that much CPU power, but a lot of RAM. The other benefit is that in future generations, when you have more hard drive capacity, you actually have tons of RAM that ZFS could potentially use for caching. You can see the Intel Atom C3758 SOC along with custom cooling, both on the heatsink for the SOC as well as in the chassis. This is something that the iSystems guys do that you wouldn't necessarily get out of the box with your own built system. You can also see that you have an M2 port, which can either take a SATA drive or a PCIe by two NVMe SSD, as well as a PCIe Gen 3 by four expansion slot for things like an SFP plus based 10 gig ethernet solution. As I think a lot of people would expect, the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus uses FreeNAS as an operating system and it comes pre-installed on its own SATA DOM. So when you log into the FreeNAS dashboard, you're gonna see the normal FreeNAS experience. You can go to storage and see that we have our eight disks plus our cache drives and our SATA DOM. You can create a pool pretty easily. And that's probably one of the first steps that you would do in a machine like this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our 32 terabyte pool. We're gonna actually use a RAID Z2, which is a double disk parity array. We can add a cache drive and then we can add a log device because the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus allows you to do both 
as does the software. And so after a few seconds, you're gonna create the pool and voila, we have about a 20 terabyte-ish array ready to go. FreeNAS now also has things like plugins and there are a whole bunch of officially supported plugins. So there are backup appliances. There are things like Plex Media Server, Nextcloud, you name it. There's actually quite a few applications that the company supports now out of the box. You can also do your own jails if you wanna add some specific functionality. Beyond that, there's also the ability to utilize virtual machines. So not only is the FreeNAS Mini Excel really designed to be a storage appliance, it's also designed to support a number of virtual machines at the edge without having to have a separate, say, VMware ESXi box or Windows Server installed. So what you can do here is, you know, we're just kind of going through some of the steps showing you how to create a VM. This uses a FreeBSD functionality called Beehive, which is just a cool name for virtualization solution, let's face it. Beyond that, FreeNAS also allows you to now have a Docker host and you can create another little virtual machine with a Docker host on it. And that host is managed by Rancher, which eventually gives you a web UI that you can use to manage all of your Docker containers. So if you wanna have virtual machines at the edge, if you wanna deploy Docker containers, or if you just wanna have free BSD jail applications and plugins, you can do all of that type of compute at the edge. And that's important because with this generation, there's a lot more processing power. Plus there's a lot more RAM capacity than we had in the previous generation FreeNAS Mini Excel. Now the system also is built on a Supermicro motherboard, which means that you get Supermicro IPMI. This means that you can manage the FreeNAS Mini Excel Plus remotely, just like you would a normal server. You can do things like have out of band management for power control. You can do an HTML IKVM viewer. You can and install and utilize remote media in case you ever had to reinstall an OS or whatever. And that gives you a lot of flexibility to troubleshoot things that may go wrong at the edge later on. We hope you enjoyed this overview of the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus. Check out the STH main site for a full review linked in the description. Thanks for watching. You can check out more from our awesome STH team on the STH main site. We have other videos on YouTube and you can always subscribe to our channel and see whatever is coming out next.